I'm Jörg Wittmer and I'm a research professor at Institute in their networks, where I lead the wireless research group. Our main focus is on millimeter wave communication, which we believe is currently one of the most interesting and challenging research topics in the area of wireless networking. Communication at millimeter wave frequencies is becoming more and more important, simply because only at these very high frequencies, sufficient bandwidth is available to allow for very high rate communication, which at lower frequencies, there simply isn't. In mobile networking, that's one of the large challenges, how to support the ever-increasing traffic rates um, from, from mobile terminals. And millimeter wave communication seems to be one of the very promising technologies to help scaling network capacities in the future. Our research group focuses very much on the protocol design, how to enable efficient networking at these frequencies. On the one hand side, communication at these frequencies allows for very high data rates and very high levels of spatial reuse. On the other hand, communication is challenging because communication distances are short, attenuation at these frequencies is very high and requires the use of directional antennas to reach sufficient communication distances. So how to design protocols in such an environment is a challenging question and that's what we mainly focus on in our lab. We will now give a brief overview of the concrete research topics that we are working on in the lab, as well as the equipment that we use. First generation millimeter wave devices are considered black boxes. For that reason, we have no control on the communication behavior and also not a very clear knowledge on the protocol that these devices are using and their capabilities. However, we use this custom measurement equipment that allow us to analyze the frame flow, the signal strength, the beam pattern, the beam training, and also the interference that might be caused by other millimeter wave devices. What we are doing right now is transmitting some data from the laptop to the docking station. This transmission is recorded by this antenna and then is displayed in the oscilloscope where we can see the actual transmission. Some materials are strong reflectors or millimeter waves. This can be something very good or something very harmful. It can be good if we take the example of blocking the main path of a communication and the different devices look for alternative ways to communicate through reflectors. Or it can be also something very harmful if the device is listening to interference caused by other devices and their reflections. What we have here is a rotational stage together with a directional antenna so we know where is the energy coming from and how does this interference affect to the different devices. Right now the wireless docking station is looking for devices, the laptop in this case. That's why we have our directional antenna facing into the dock. Right now we can see that the power is received from the laptop but if we put something in between all the components will be blocked, as we can see there. So now we have seen that we have blocked the direct path and with the rotation stage, we will see if the energy is coming from a different component, from the reflecting wall. So now we can see on the oscilloscope how the signal is bouncing into the wall. One of the key mechanisms for millimeter wave communication is beam training. Beam training is the process of direction finding between two devices that want to communicate. And this direction is then used to beam form towards the other device and overcome the high attenuation on millimeter wave frequencies. Unfortunately, omnidirectional transmission is very hard to achieve on millimeter wave frequencies. This is why the beam training process usually is realized as a trial and error approach where all sets of possible transmit and receive sectors have to be matched against each other. This of course comes with a high overhead that is needed to exchange management data and that could be used for data transmission otherwise and increase the overall throughput. Also, whenever there's mobility in the network, the direction between devices change and the whole beam training process has to be repeated. 
In order to improve the beam training process, we propose to combine multiple frequency bands. To this aim, we use antenna arrays for lower frequency Wi-Fi and passively overhear the communication in a room. By having multiple of the antenna arrays in the same room, we can actually triangulate and build a map of all the devices in the room. The devices can then use the information from the map and replace the brute force beam training and directly focus the signal energy towards their communication partners. We expect most of the next generation millimeter wave devices to be compatible to our technique. This is because these devices are supposed to be mighty band capable as well. The IEEE 800-211 AD standard, for example, defines a fast session transfer feature, which will basically move on the data from millimeter wave frequencies to lower Wi-Fi frequencies whenever the transmission is blocked. Thus, devices compatible to 800-211 AD will also be compatible to our technique. We evaluated our dual band approach in a meeting room environment and actually achieved to completely remove the beam training overhead for several locations. We also, on average, achieved a 70% overhead reduction when considering all locations.